Structural coloration is the production of color by microscopically structured surfaces fine enough to interfere with visible light, sometimes in combination with pigments. For example, peacock tail feathers are pigmented brown, but their microscopic structure makes them also reflect blue, turquoise, and green light, and they are often iridescent. Structural coloration was first observed by English scientists Robert Hooke and Isaac Newton, and its principle, wave interference, explained by Thomas Young a century later. Young correctly described iridescence as the result of interference between reflections from two surfaces of thin films, combined with refraction as light enters and leaves such films. The geometry then determines that at certain angles, the light reflected from both surfaces adds, while at other angles, the light subtracts. Different colors therefore appear at different angles. In animals such as on the feathers of birds and the scales of butterflies, interference is created by a range of photonic mechanisms including diffraction gratings, selective mirrors, photonic crystals, crystal fibers, matrices of nanochannels and proteins that can vary their configuration. Some cuts of meat also show structural coloration due to the exposure of the periodic arrangement of the muscular fibers. Many of these photonic mechanisms correspond to elaborate structures visible by electron microscopy. In plants, brilliant colors are produced by structures within cells. The most brilliant blue coloration known in any living tissue is found in the marble berries of polya condensata, where a spiral structure of cellulose fibrils produces Bragg's law scattering of light. Structural coloration has potential for industrial, commercial and military application, with biomimetic surfaces that could provide brilliant colors, adaptive camouflage, efficient optical switches and low reflectance glass. History in his 1665 book Micrographia, Robert Hooke described the fantastical colors of the peacock's feathers. The parts of the feathers of this glorious bird appear through the microscope, no less gaudy than do the whole feathers. For, as to the naked eye, it is evident that the stem or quill of each feather in the tail sends out multitudes of lateral branches. So each of those threads in the microscope appears a large long body, consisting of a multitude of bright reflecting parts. Their upper sides seem to me to consist of a multitude of thin plaited bodies, which are exceeding thin, and lie very close together, and thereby, like mother of pearl shells, do not only reflect a very brisk light but tinge that light in a most curious manner, and by means of various positions, in respect of the light, they reflect back now one color, and then another, and those most vividly. Now, that these colors are only fantastical ones, that is, such as arise immediately from the refractions of the light, I found by this, that water wetting these colored parts, destroyed their colors which seemed to proceed from the alteration of the reflection and refraction. In his 1704 book Optics, Isaac Newton described the mechanism of the colors of peacock tail feathers. Newton noted that the finely colored feathers of some birds, and particularly those of peacock's tails, do, in the very same part of the feather, appear of several colors in several positions of the eye, after the very same manner that thin plates were found to do in the 7th and 19th observations, and therefore their colors arise from the thinness of the transparent parts of the feathers, that is, from the slenderness of the very fine hairs or capillamentur, which grow out of the sides of the grosser lateral branches or fibers of those feathers. Thomas Young extended Newton's particle theory of light by showing that light could also behave as a wave. He showed in 1803 that light could diffract from sharp edges or slits, creating interference patterns. In his 1892 book Animal Coloration, Frank Evers Bedard acknowledged the existence of structural colors. The colors of animals are due either solely to the presence of definite pigments in the skin, or beneath the skin, or they are partly caused by optical effects due to the scattering, diffraction or unequal refraction of the light rays. Colors of the latter kind are often spoken of as structural colors, they are caused by the structure of the colored surfaces. 
The metallic luster of the feathers of many birds, such as the hummingbirds, is due to the presence of excessively fine striae upon the surface of the feathers, but Bedard then largely dismissed structural coloration, firstly as subservient to pigments. In every case that structural color needs for its display a background of dark pigment, and then by asserting its rarity, by far the commonest source of color in invertebrate animals is the presence in the skin of definite pigments, though he does later admit that the Cape Golden Mole has structural peculiarities in its hair that give rise to brilliant colors. Principles Structure not pigments Structural coloration is caused by interference effects rather than by pigments. Colors are produced when a material is scored with fine parallel lines formed of one or more parallel thin layers, or otherwise composed of microstructures on the scale of the color's wavelength. These are often iridescent, as in peacock feathers and nacreous shells such as of pearl oysters and nautilus. This is because the reflected color depends on the viewing angle, which in turn governs the apparent spacing of the structures responsible. Structural colors can be combined with pigment colors. Peacock feathers are pigmented brown with melanin. Principle of iridescence Iridescence, as explained by Thomas Young in 1803, is created when extremely thin films reflect part of the light falling on them from their top surfaces. The rest of the light goes through the films, and a further part of it is reflected from their bottom surfaces. The two sets of reflected waves travel back upwards in the same direction, but since the bottom reflected waves traveled a little further, controlled by the thickness and refractive index of the film, and the angle at which the light fell, the two sets of waves are out of phase. When the waves are one or more whole wavelength apart, in other words at certain specific angles, they add, giving a strong reflection. At other angles and phase differences, they can subtract, giving weak reflections. The thin film therefore selectively reflects just one wavelength, a pure color, at any given angle. But other wavelengths, different colors, at different angles. So, as a thin film structure like a butterfly's wing or bird's feather moves, it seems to change color. Mechanisms Fixed structures A number of fixed structures can create structural colors by mechanisms including diffraction gratings, selective mirrors, photonic crystals, crystal fibers and deformed matrices. Structures can be far more elaborate than a single thin film. Films can be stacked up to give strong iridescence, to combine two colors, or to balance out the inevitable change of color with angle to give a more diffuse, less iridescent effect. Each mechanism offers a specific solution to the problem of creating a bright color or combination of colors visible from different directions. A diffraction grating constructed of layers of chitin and air gives rise to the iridescent colors of various butterfly wing scales as well as to the tail feathers of birds such as the peacock. Hooke and Newton were correct in their claim that the peacock's colors are created by interference, but the structures responsible, being close to the wavelength of light in scale, were smaller than the striated structures they could see with their light microscopes. Another way to produce a diffraction grating is with tree-shaped arrays of chitin, as in the wing scales of some of the brilliantly colored tropical morpho butterflies. Yet another variant exists in Parotia lauraceae. Laws is Parotia, a bird of paradise. The barbules of the feathers of its brightly colored breast patch are V-shaped, creating thin film microstructures that strongly reflect two different colors, bright blue, green, and orange yellow. When the bird moves, the color switches sharply between these two colors, rather than drifting iridescently. During courtship, the male bird systematically makes small movements to attract females, so the structures must have evolved through sexual selection. Photonic crystals can be formed in different ways. In Parides sesostris, the emerald-patched cattle heart butterfly, photonic crystals are formed of arrays of nano-sized holes in the chitin of the wing scales. The holes have a diameter of about 150 nanometers and are about the same distance apart. 
The holes are arranged regularly in small patches. Neighboring patches contain arrays with differing orientations. The result is that these emerald patched cattle heart scales reflect green light evenly at different angles instead of being iridescent. In Lamprocyphus augustus, a weevil from Brazil, the chitin exoskeleton is covered in iridescent green oval scales. These contain diamond-based crystal lattices oriented in all directions to give a brilliant green coloration that hardly varies with angle. The scales are effectively divided into pixels about a mu meter wide. Each such pixel is a single crystal and reflects light in a direction different from its neighbors. Selective mirrors to create interference effects are formed of micron-sized bowl-shaped pits lined with multiple layers of chitin in the wing scales of Papayo palinurus, the emerald swallowtail butterfly. These act as highly selective mirrors for two wavelengths of light. Yellow light is reflected directly from the centers of the pits. Blue light is reflected twice by the sides of the pits. The combination appears green, but can be seen as an array of yellow spots surrounded by blue circles under a microscope. Crystal fibers, formed of hexagonal arrays of hollow nanofibers, create the bright iridescent colors of the bristles of Aphrodite, the sea mouse, a non-worm-like genus of marine annelids. The colors are aposematic, warning predators not to attack. The chitin walls of the hollow bristles form a hexagonal honeycomb-shaped photonic crystal. The hexagonal holes are 0.51 mu meter apart. The structure behaves optically as if it consisted of a stack of 88 diffraction gratings, making Aphrodite one of the most iridescent of marine organisms. Deformed matrices, consisting of randomly oriented nanochannels in a sponge-like heraton matrix create the diffuse non-iridescent blue color of Ara Araorna, the blue and yellow macaw. Since the reflections are not all arranged in the same direction, the colors, while still magnificent, do not vary much with angle, so they are not iridescent. Spiral coils, formed of helicoidally stacked cellulose microfibrils, create Bragg reflection in the marble berries of the African herb polyacondensator, resulting in the most intense blue coloration known in nature. The berry's surface has four layers of cells with thick walls, containing spirals of transparent cellulose space so as to allow constructive interference with blue light. Below these cells is a layer two or three cells thick containing dark brown tannins. Polya produces a stronger color than the wings of morpho butterflies, and is one of the first instances of structural coloration known from any plant. Each cell has its own thickness of stacked fibers, making it reflect a different color from its neighbors, and producing a pixelated or pointillist effect with different blues speckled with brilliant green, purple and red dots. The fibers in any one cell are either left-handed or right-handed, so each cell circularly polarizes the light it reflects in one direction or the other. Polya is the first organism known to show such random polarization of light, which, nevertheless, does not have a visual function, as the seed-eating birds that visit this plant species are not able to perceive polarized light. Spiral microstructures are also found in scarab beetles where they produce iridescent colors. Surface gratings, consisting on ordered surface features due exposure of ordered muscle cells on cuts of meat. The structural coloration on meat cuts appears only after the ordered pattern of muscle fibrils is exposed and light is diffracted by the proteins in the fibrils. The coloration or wavelength of the diffracted light depends on the angle of observation and can be enhanced by covering the meat with translucent foils. Roughening the surface or removing water content by drying causes the structure to collapse, thus, the structural coloration to disappear. Variable structures Some animals including cephalopods like squid are able to vary their colors rapidly for both camouflage and signaling. The mechanisms include reversible proteins which can be switched between two configurations. The configuration of reflectin proteins in chromatophore cells in the skin of the loligopile squid is controlled by electric charge. 
When charge is absent, the proteins stack together tightly, forming a thin, more reflective layer. When charge is present, the molecules stack more loosely, forming a thicker layer. Since chromatophores contain multiple reflectant layers, the switch changes the layer spacing and hence the color of light that is reflected. Examples European bee-eaters owe their brilliant colors partly to diffraction grating microstructures in their feathers. In morpho butterflies such as morpho helena the brilliant colors are produced by intricate fir tree-shaped microstructures too small for optical microscopes. The male Parotia lauraceae bird of paradise signals to the female with his breast feathers that switch from blue to yellow. Brilliant green of emerald swallowtail, Papio palinurus, is created by a rays of microscopic bowls that reflect yellow directly and blue from the sides. Emerald patched cattle heart butterfly, Peride sesostris, creates its brilliant green using photonic crystals. Iridescent scales of Lamprocyphus augustus weevil contain diamond-based crystal lattices oriented in all directions to give almost uniform green. Hollow nanofiber bristles of Aphrodite oculi to reflect light in yellows, reds and greens to warn off predators. Long fin inshore squid, Lolligo pile, has been studied for its ability to change color. In technology, Structural coloration could be exploited industrially and commercially, and research that could lead to such applications is underway. A direct parallel would be to create active or adaptive military camouflage fabrics that vary their colors and patterns to match their environments, just as chameleons and cephalopods do. The ability to vary reflectivity to different wavelengths of light could also lead to efficient optical switches that could function like transistors, enabling engineers to make fast optical computers and routers. The surface of the compound eye of the housefly is densely packed with microscopic projections that have the effect of reducing reflection and hence increasing transmission of incident light. Similarly, the eyes of some moths have anti-reflective surfaces, again using arrays of pillars smaller than the wavelength of light. Anti-reflective biomimetic surfaces using the moth eye principle can be manufactured by first creating a mask by lithography with gold nanoparticles, and then performing reactive ion etching. Bibliography Pioneering books Baird Art, Frank Evers Animal coloration, an account of the principal facts and theories relating to the colors and markings of animals. Swan Sun and Shine, London, 2nd edition, 1895. Hook, Robert. Micrographia, John Martin and James Allistry, London, Newton, Isaac. Optics, William Innes, London, Research Fox, DL. Animal biochromes and animal structural colors. University of California Press. Johnson. The Optics of Life. A Biologist's Guide to Light in Nature. Princeton University Press. Carl. Photonic Structures Inspired by Nature. Springer. General Books Brebier, C.A. Color in At, Design and Nature. Wit Press. Lee. D.W. Nature's Palette. The Science of Plant Color. University of Chicago Press.